Hello. I put a couple of new cells together, and I just thought I'd share them with everybody. These uh, cells that I put together, I got the idea, of course, from Pungo Free Energy, and they're kind of based around the cell 15. I made some changes to them. Uh, not a great deal, but a little bit. And I'll explain that as I go along here. Uh, the, the chemicals I use inside of the cell, I have them listed right here. Sodium silicate, dried. I take a, a little of this and I pour it into a shallow dish, not very deep, less than an eighth inch. And as it's drying, I stir it once in a while and I kind of break it up into a crystal substance after as it dries for about a day, day and a half. And then I, I uh, hammer it up into uh, very small particles. Okay. And the uh, next one here is the carbon, and that's right there. That's premium activated carbon, and that simply is uh, fish tank uh, filter material. And I, and I grind that up a bit too. And the uh, next one, the alm, that's supermarket right off the shelf. I use it just as it is. And the last one I've been adding on now is the iron pyrite. I uh, went on eBay and I ordered some uh, little pieces of iron pyrite like this. And I, uh, I hammer them up pretty small, like so they're uh, almost like salt and pepper. The way I do that is I have a, I don't know if you can see this whole thing or not, it's just a six inch uh, black iron nipple with a cap on the end. And inside of it here there's a iron uh, shaft. I take that shaft out and I put in a few pieces of the uh, iron pyrite and I just hammer the heck out of them. And when I get tired of hammering after a while, I take them, I dump them into this strainer here. And I shake them all out, and whatever's left in the strainer goes back into my little homemade hammer mill here, and I hammer some more, <laughs> till I finally get it all down pretty fine. That works pretty darn good. Okay, what I'm using to make these with, a piece of uh, three-quarter inch copper pipe, and I clean it very thoroughly on the inside and outside, and the three-quarter inch copper cap, as you see. The uh, cap makes it possible that when they start drying out, you can take it off and uh, add a little water to them and get them going again. Now, the next thing I do is I take a fire starter like this one, uh, and uh, I put a little stainless steel uh, bolt and nut through it and just uh, bolt a little piece of paper clip to it. Then I put about three wraps of paper towel around it. I don't know if you can see it on there, but I'm using little, little tiny strips of paper tape that I picked up at the drugstore to hold that on there nice and neat. Then I take them and I just set it right inside there. I stuff enough paper in the bottom and I pack it down so this thing sets right about there. So I want it when, I, when I'm ready to fill it with the uh, filler I put in there. Uh, I take a, at this point though, I, I do take a little spoon, a little tiny spoon, and I start adding the chemical and I tap it and shake it until I get it full. You know, of the uh, carbon and almond, silicon, iron pyrite. And the mixture I use, the sodium silicate dried and pound it up a bit. I use one part of that, two parts of carbon, two parts of alum, and one part of iron pyrite. The the the, the uh, have a paper towel, of course, and uh, the magnesium fire starter, copper pipe, and cap. And the part is, I say one part. Well, that could be a quarter teaspoon. Or the part could be a quarter teaspoon. It could be a teaspoon. Whatever you want it to be. And, and I dump it in and I fill it up. And then I'll usually hook a meter to it once it's full, and uh, it'll read zero. If it's perfectly dry, it won't read anything at all. Then, I, then I'll take uh, this little uh, eyedropper here, and I fill it full, and I, I drop it in, in, in around the edges, and then you'll see that meter shoot up. It'll go up to 1.8 volts. And I do that twice. Fill it up like that. And once it settled down, I, I couldn't hardly believe what was going on. I was getting 1.8 volts initially. And on the, the first one here, this one right here, 
I got 64 milliamps, and then on this one, and even though they're identical, and I don't know why, this thing shot up to 150 milliamps. And after that, and it pretty much wanted to stay there. Puzzle the heck on me. Well, anyway, after I do my test and everything, then I take some hot glue, and I uh, I simply glue the uh, top shut, seal it right shut, to keep the liquid in. Knowing that if they dry out, I can always pull that cap off the bottom. Add a little water to them. And I sh all I can say is uh, thank you very much, Plain Glow, for heading me in the right direction on this stuff. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm still going. <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to show you what this little thing will do. Over here I have a circuit, and I'll show you the circuit. Yeah, there's 50 LEDs on there. And then I have another board hooked to it in parallel with 60 in it. So there's a total of 80, uh, no, there's more than that, 30, there's 30 in here, I'm sorry, 30, so there's a total, there's 30 in this board here. Uh, so there's a total of 80 all together, LEDs. And before I fire her up, I'll, I'll show you the circuit for the LEDs. It, it's, it's right here, hopefully you can see that all right. Uh, and if you can't, just go go to uh, this fellow here, his channel. He calls it the Jewel Thief Experiments by Soltec. And he, he does a very nice explanation of how it works and he shows how to put it together and everything. Very nice job. And my thanks to him for that too. I did a very good replica of it and it works really great. Okay. We'll hop back over here, get this out of the way for a minute, and we're going to take and hook up the power to the uh, homemade little cells here. There we go. Now, you can see the 50 LEDs are all right as can be, and the 30 of them over here. <laughs> They're really doing great. That's two of them. Oh, by the way, I'm running it through that circuit. It's, it's just a little blocking oscillator, a jewel type, jewel thief type thing. Uh, it'll, it'll light them up just about that bright without that circuit in there. I'm using it because it was on that board, and it was running all them lights. I tried it without the circuit in there, and it lit them up really good. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll show you that real quick. I'll disconnect this guy here. And let's disconnect this one here. Uh, let's see if I can hook this guy up. If I'm watching what I'm doing, sometimes the camera goes astray. <laughs> I'm not watching what I'm doing. This is the one with 30. Let me get it hooked up here. There she goes. That's the uh, two new cells I just put together. Lighting up them 30 LEDs. As you can see, it does a heck of a job. <laughs> it kind of blinds me, I'll tell you. It's really bright. Okay. Well, having a lot of fun. Hope you are too. Thanks very much for watching.